know Adolf Hitler. You've never seen him like this before. Hitler's contemporaries, from his birth in Braunau to his death in the bunker, authentically flesh out the picture. Who was Hitler? Hitler neither finished school nor had any vocational training. He occasionally lived in homeless shelters or on the street. He refused to pursue a regular job. To this day, it seems inexplicable that he could come to power. Out of nowhere, Hitler became the Führer, leader of the German Reich, one of the most powerful men of the 20th century. Starting an inferno that engulfed the world and brought death to millions of people. The nation worshipped him and followed him blindly into the abyss. But during his lifetime, he kept his origins and his life secret. No one should know how or who he was. Fascinating and oppressive accounts from companions, friends and enemies, as well as the most extensive collection of archive material ever shown. Much of it, hitherto unpublished, reveal who Hitler was and how he could become what he was. A notorious liar and an unscrupulous murderer. Initially engaged by the police to supply information on the NSDAP, Hitler quickly takes on the leading role in the party. He recognizes that he has talent as a public speaker and his skills in art and architecture enable him to lay out a modern image of the party. He designs the swastika flag. He is impressed by the march to Rome by Mussolini and the fascists in Italy and attempts to copy it. But Hitler's attempted coup of 1923 fails and he spends more than a year in jail, during which time he writes Mein Kampf. The NSDAP is banned and he and the entire membership are forbidden from speaking in public. Hitler is confronted with an uncertain future. It was not just young people marching up and down the streets. There were many who could not get over the defeat. And many others were unable to find their way back into normal working life because that world had disappeared or was falling apart and there was no regular work, even if one was willing to work. George Gross, painter, his life told by himself. In the military hospital in Pasewalk, Adolf Hitler and the other patients learn that a revolution has taken place, the monarchy abdicated, and a ceasefire been concluded. Diary, Spa, November the 3rd, 1918. Bavaria has been declared a republic. Hinzer announces that the Reichstag, except for the conservatives, demands the abdication of the Kaiser. His Majesty sharply refuses. Diary, Spa, November the 7th, 1918. We are now experiencing the blooming of Bolshevism in Germany. The Kaiser can now only sleep with the help of pills. Sigurd von Ilsemann, adjutant to Kaiser Wilhelm II. Diary, Berlin, November the 9th, 1918. The Kaiser has abdicated. The revolution has triumphed in Berlin. Harry Graf Kessler, publicist and diplomat. I hadn't cried since the day I stood by my mother's grave. Now, I couldn't stop myself. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Like everything else in Mein Kampf, this portrayal is a stylization and must be doubted. We don't know whether it was Hitler's will or merely coincidence that influenced his future course from then on. But from that point on, I decided to become a politician. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Revolution breaks out in Munich on November the 7th, 1918, before the unrest reaches Berlin. 
The following day, the journalist and author Kurt Eisner, a left-wing member of the Social Democrats, proclaims a republic in Munich. The Wittelsbach dynasty has been deposed. From now on, Bavaria is a free state. Kurt Eisner, proclamation, November the 8th, 1918. Instituted by workers and soldiers, a government of right and left-wing social democrats led by Kurt Eisner govern Munich and Bavaria for 100 days. Some members of his government are keen on introducing worker and peasant councils. They didn't understand Eisner. How should they? There was no imperial Bavarian coziness, roughness, sloppiness or bonhomie to him. He was an abstract moralist. Ricardo Huch, writer and historian, Munich. On November the 21st, 1918, Adolf Hitler returns to Munich. He tries to evade demobilization and remain a soldier. As a Jew, Eisner is exposed to relentless anti-Semitic attacks from the very start. The campaign against him ends on February the 21st, 1919, when he is shot dead in the street in broad daylight by a former officer. The body of Kurt Eisner is escorted by a long funeral procession from Munich's Theresienwiese to the Ostfriedhof Cemetery. The proletariat wanted to turn Eisner's grave into a victory memorial. The gathering was said to have been enormous. Ricardo Huff. Adolf Hitler accompanies the procession as a silent observer. He keeps his distance to the radical revolutionary forces, but as yet also to their right-wing opponents. There are clashes in the state capital between radical left-wing supporters of the workers' councils and parliamentary democracy. The parliamentary-oriented Social Democrat majority allows right-wing volunteer groups, the so-called free cause, to break the power of the workers' councils. Hitler, still a soldier, doesn't register with a right-wing corps, but instead remains in his barracks in Munich. Letter to Clara and Fritz Hess. The volunteer corps made an excellent impression. Without them, we would have been finished in Bavaria. Rudolf Hess, student and member of the Free Corps. All we knew was that one wind was blowing in from the east and another from the west, and that the storm was blowing all around the earth. But the capital of our new German Republic was also like a bubbling cauldron. You could not see who was heating the cauldron. You just saw him boiling cheerfully and felt the ever-increasing heat. All were hated. The Jews, the capitalists, the landowners, the communists, the military, the homeowners, the workers, the unemployed, the Black Reichswehr, the control commissions, the politicians, the department stores, and once again, the Jews. It was an orgy of hate speech, and the Republic was weak, barely perceptible. That had to end in a terrible crash. George Gross. In German society, there are distinct social environments, above all the broad-based but politically divided workers' movement. The legacy of the Social Democratic Babel Party was great, with all their organizations, from the cradle to the grave, and belief in the future, which allowed one to forget the gloom of the present. Willy Brandt, born as Herbert Frahm in Lübeck, Memoirs. At first, the emerging National Socialist movement couldn't break into the socialist and Catholic environments, and then only gradually. Up until the death of the charismatic politician Gustav Stresemann in October 1929, both social groups believe they can form a parliamentary majority in the German Reich, with the parties of the Protestant middle and upper classes. 
Not every petty bourgeois can become a Hitler, but there is something of Hitler in every petty bourgeois. Leo Trotsky, communist revolutionary in Mexican exile. Adolf Hitler's entry into politics has historical significance. It begins in Munich in the summer and autumn of 1919. In the deeper layers of man, predatory forces lie dormant. Guards of lunatic asylums know this. If these forces are able to influence mass movements, this has effects like those created by Hitler. Arno Zweig, German writer. Postcard to Clara and Fritz Hess. The one thing that keeps me going is the hope of revenge, even though it is still very far away. Rudolf Hess. The war veteran Hitler feels less desire for revenge than contempt for the supposed traitors in the interior. In the second volume of Mein Kampf, he will voice the threat of wanting to execute several tens of thousands of so-called November criminals. The Reichswehr was created out of the armies of Imperial Prussia, Bavaria, Saxony and Württemberg. The Bavarian army becomes a melting pot for anti-republican forces. During this period, Hitler grows more radical. He is under the influence of army officers like Karl Meyer, the head of the intelligence battalion. When I met him for the first time, he came across as a tired stray dog looking for an owner. Karl Meyer, captain of the Reichswehr. Karl Meyer also finances patriotic parties like the Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, the German Workers' Party, which is founded in Munich on January the 5th, 1919, mainly by a group of railwaymen. Meyer observes his subordinate, Hitler, discovers his ability to agitate, and assigns the corporal to attend a course at the Reichwehr camp at Lechfeld near Augsburg. Karl Alexander von Müller, National Conservative Historian, Memoirs. At the end of my lecture, a small group came over. They seemed captivated by a man in their midst who spoke to them without interruption, in a strange guttural voice and with growing passion. One day, I had the opportunity to talk to a large audience, and what I had always instinctively felt without knowing it turned out to be true. I could speak in public. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Herr Hitler is, I might say, a born people's orator, who, through his fanaticism and his popular presence in the gathering, compels his audience to listen and think. A soldier, camp at Leschfeld. On September the 12th, 1919, Hitler, who has in the meantime been demobbed, is sent to spy on the German Workers' Party by Myra, who also provides financial support. During the discussion, a professor spoke about separatist views. A second speaker then took the floor and, in short, powerful words, demolished the professor. It was Adolf Hitler. Michael Lotter, secretary of the German Workers' Party. In the second half of September 1919, Hitler joins the German Workers' Party and participates regularly in its meetings. German Workers' Party, Munich chapter. We hereby request your presence at an assembly at the guest house, German Reich, on Wednesday, December the 10th, 1919, at 7 p.m. Speaker, Herr Hitler, on Germany in its deepest humiliation, the hall is heated. 
Yosef Maya, first secretary. Among the various right-wing radical organizations, the NSDAP was by no means the strongest, but it was the most active and cohesive group. Its significance is solely the result of the effect of Hitler as a speaker. Ernst Hanfstenger, born 1887, son of a publisher, acquaintance of Adolf Hitler from 1920. The architectural painter Hitler sketches a party flag in the old Reich colors of black, red and white, with a swastika in the middle. This is a popular symbol in nationalist circles. The swastika as a symbol of the work, the white as a sign of our national attitude, and the red as a sign of our true social thought. In the cross, however, there must be a deeper meaning, namely the spirit which signifies labor in this world, the spirit of the idealism of Arianism, and not the spirit of the Jew. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Shortly after the cop putsch, I saw someone scribbling strange figures in his notebook. A few strokes that could be shaped into a symmetrical, box-like ornament. I was tempted to do the same. What is that? I asked him in a whisper. Anti-Semitic insignia. The Earhart troops wore them on their helmets. It means Jews out. You have to know this. Sebastian Hafner, author, memoirs. The swastika is found on prehistoric vessels and devices and is a Buddhist religious symbol in India. Maya's Great Encyclopedia, 1888. On February the 24th, 1920, Hitler speaks for the first time in front of more than a thousand people at the Hofbräuhaus. He also presents the party's 25-point program, which is formally valid for a quarter of a century until the demise of the NSDAP. First, we demand the unification of all Germans in a greater Germany based on the right of self-determination of the people. Second, we demand equal rights for the German people in respect to other nations and the abrogation of the peace treaties of Versailles and Saint-Germain. Third, we demand land and territory for the sustenance of our people and settlement of our surplus population. Fourth, only a national comrade can be a citizen. Only those of German blood can be national comrades, regardless of creed. Consequently, no Jew can be a national comrade. A few days later, they changed their name from the German Workers' Party to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or NSDAP. That Hitler is staunchly anti-Semitic is made undoubtedly clear in his later acts. When and perhaps why he became so radically anti-Semitic is still unclear. His own statements on this, including the description in Mein Kampf of an experience in Vienna, are, like many others, invented, because they do not fit with his behavior between 1909 and 1919. Hitler possessed the gift of auto-suggestion. Impulsive enthusiasm inspired words with whose impetus he himself could be carried away. Thus, he worked himself into a state in which he began to believe things he had originally touched on only haphazardly or for a different purpose. Lutz Graf Schwerin von Krosek, from 1932 to 1945, Reich Finance Minister. Hitler was the party, and the party was Hitler. Ernst Hanfstengel. Adolf Hitler meets Ernst Röhm, an active staff officer who had taken part in the violent overthrow of the Munich Workers' Councils. Röhm is soon in charge of a Hitler assault detachment. From the end of 1921, the troops form the core of the SA, the stormtroopers of the NSDAP 
The task of the SA is to protect political events and provide paramilitary training. It remains an indisputable law of history that people fail to recognize great movements when they first begin. So I can't really say when I first heard the name Adolf Hitler. In any case, it must have been really early on because our Salzburg was two and a half hours away by train, sort of a neighboring city of Munich. Stefan Zweig. I heard about Hitler for the first time in the year 1920. I read several essays by him which I very much admired. They were completely to my taste. My interest in Hitler was awakened. Karl Wahl, civil servant in Augsburg, later provincial NSDAP leader. Hitler, the party leader, was a homo novus. Nobody really knew where he came from. Albert Krebs, member of the NSDAP from 1922. Hitler is unmarried and has no friends. He has no assets. And he doesn't take any income from the party. Investigative Division 4A, Munich Police. At a protest rally on Königsplatz in Munich on August the 16th, 1922, Hitler speaks with other leaders of nationalist unity movements. During the rally, the SA appear for the first time in public as a paramilitary formation with their own flag. Numerically, they're barely noticeable, with fewer than 800 participants compared to the 30,000 armed men of the other parties. Because right now, here in Munich, a movement is starting so strong that all young, powerful and healthy forces are attracted to it. It is the National Socialist German Workers' Party. To make it absolutely clear, we are anti-Semites. Ilse Prull, later Ilse Hess, from 1921, member of the NSDAP. Letter to her former college teacher. Diary, October the 29th, 1922. In Italy, the fascists have seized power via a coup. And if they keep it up, this is a historical event that could have incalculable consequences for the whole of Europe. Harry Graf Kessler. The march on Rome in 1922 was a turning point in history. The very fact that it could be done gave us a big boost. Adolf Hitler, monologue in the Führer's headquarters. For Hitler, Il Duce was a role model. Raquel Mussolini, wife of Benito Mussolini. Speech at the National Club in Zurich, August the 30th, 1923. Things either take their course, like in Russia, or end up like in Italy, with the dictatorship of a Mussolini. Adolf Hitler. I heard Hitler's name for the first time in a pub on Alexanderplatz in Berlin. A customer was talking about the Bavarians. They're real men. They're the right ones, workers and real Germans. His neighbors protested, but the supporter of this man, Hitler, kept insisting. I'm speaking as a German and a worker. Ilya Ehrenburg, Russian Jewish writer. Actually, the seeds were already sown in 1923. The mass rallies, the storm battalions, their own newspaper, the swastika. Apart from Himmler and Goebbels, the core of the coming leadership of the party. Karl Alexander von Müller, acquaintance of Hitler. When the first party congress is held, the Augsburg essay is well represented. At this first public presentation, I get the impression that this has substance. We are not alone. 
the idea of the fatherland is growing. Karl Wahl, Augsburg, former SA member. The orator Hitler is still flirting with his future role. May the 4th, 1923. What can save Germany is a dictatorship of national will and national resoluteness. This raises the question, is the right personality present? Our task is not to look for that person. He is either delivered from heaven or not delivered at all. Adolf Hitler. On April the 23rd, 1923, Adolf Hitler climbs up the Obersalzberg for the first time to visit the author Dietrich Eckart. He spends the night in the Morgert's guest house. The owners of the guest house are supporters of the movement. Letter to Clara and Fritz Hess, July the 15th, 1923. Fortunately, Hitler is now often in the mountains recuperating. It's really unusual to suddenly see him in lederhosen with exposed knees and in shirt sleeves. Rudolf Hess. September the 18th, 1923. About half past nine, we set out. Weber and I sat behind the Fuhrer in the car with cocked pistols in hand, ready to act at any moment. We arrived in Berlin at about 2 a.m. I'm thankful that I can remember that he pointed out the palace and the parliament and said to me, Graf, when our swastika waves above these magnificent buildings, I'll be the Fuhrer of all Germans. Ulrich right, Graf, Adolf Hitler's first bodyguard. My belief in Germanism had not wavered for a single moment. But my hope, I confess, had reached a low ebb. With a single blow, you have transformed the state of my soul. The fact that Germany gave birth to a Hitler in its hour of greatest need is proof of its vitality. Houston Stuart Chamberlain, British racial theorist. Letter to Adolf Hitler, October the 7th, 1923. The German economy collapses. In August 1923, hyperinflation sets in. Everything is getting worse. Famine. A loaf of bread, 140 billion. Then reduced again to 80 billion. Famine, famine everywhere. Kate Kolwitz. In the evening, to the Spechts. In the summer, for the worldwide performance rights to all Mahler's works, Alma Mahler got 250,000 marks on a day when a tram ride cost 300,000 marks. Arthur Schnitzler, Austrian writer, diary. The national associations overestimate their own strength and believe that parliamentary democracy is at an end. The writer Ernst Jünger in the Völkische Beobachter newspaper, September the 23rd, 1923. The real revolution has not even begun yet. It is marching forward, unstoppable. Its banner is the swastika. It will replace words with deeds, ink with blood, the pen with the sword. Interview with the Daily Mail newspaper, October the 2nd, 1923. If a Mussolini were to appear in Germany, then the people would fall on their knees and worship him more than Mussolini has ever been worshipped. Adolf Hitler. A large revolt from the right in Bavaria with Ludendorff at its head. Henrietta Schneider. Housekeeper, East Prussia. Report of the Regional Government of Upper Bavaria, Munich, November the 9th, 1923. The day before yesterday, Hitler promised General von Lossau and Colonel von Zeisser personally that he would not undertake anything. 
The answer to this word of honor was given last night when, with pistol in hand, Hitler extorted a declaration in favor of a national dictatorship from General State Commissioner von Kahr, General von Losso, and Colonel von Seisser. At the same time, the ministers present were taken into custody by Hitler's people. In a voice trembling with emotion, Hitler shouted, the national revolution has begun. The Bavarian government is deposed. A provisional government will be formed. Please stay calm, otherwise I'll put a machine gun in the gallery. Ernst Hanfstengel. Remain calm and level-headed. You've all got your beer. Hermann Göring, former captain, SA leader. Hitler presents his suggestions for new governments in Berlin and Munich and mentions Erich Ludendorff as Führer and Chief with dictatorial power over the German National Army. He asks the already drunken audience, Do you accept this solution for the German question of a greater German state? Then, as the crowd shouts its agreement, Hitler proclaims, Morning will either find us with a national government in Germany or find us dead. November the 9th, 1923. The dreadful revolution was five years ago today. The Kaiser was pensive. He was really interested in news of the new national government in Munich. Sigurd von Ilsemann, adjutant to Kaiser Wilhelm II, Dorn, Netherlands. The revolt is intended to put Munich and Bavaria in the hands of the revolutionaries and then, with a march on Berlin, to topple the democratic system. The Putschists are counting on defections from the army in Bavaria and the Bavarian police. These, however, fail to materialize. The only major success of the revolutionaries is the capture of the district army headquarters under the command of Ernst Röhm. In his wake marches a young man with metal-rimmed glasses, the 23-year-old Heinrich Himmler, an unemployed agronomist. On the morning of November the 10th, 2,000 revolutionaries, some armed, march from the Bürgerbräu Beerhall through the center of town to Ludwigstraße at Odeonsplatz. Ten years later, Munich, November the 9th, 1933. Amateur film of a tradition that actually dates from the year of the seizure of power, the annual march of the old fighters of the NSDAP to the Feldherrnhalle. Leading the column, as in 1923, are Adolf Hitler and Hermann Göring. Report of the local station to Federal State Police Command. At 12.30 on November the 9th, 1923, Police station Vorstadt Mitte 2 was deployed to Tiatinastrasse to defend against an advance by Hitler troops. The police had just arrived when wild shouting and screaming began on Residenzstrasse. I hurried around Feldhorn Hall with my squad and noticed that the counterattack of the Hitler troops had penetrated our post. As we attacked our opponents, we were met with mounted bayonets and loaded rifles and pistols. Michael Freiherr von Godin, Lieutenant, Federal State Police. We retreated to Café Stephanie. People soon came in and said there had been a skirmish on the Audiensplatz, and the enormous crowd of Hitler men turned and ran away from the State Police. Oscar Maria Graf, writer from my life. Fifteen revolutionaries, one bystander, and four policemen die in the Hitler coup of 1923. The Munich Putsch marks the definite end for Hitler and his National Socialist followers. New York Times, November 1923. November the 12th, 1923, 
Adolf Hitler is sent to the fortress prison in Landsberg. He is given cell number seven. The leaders of the Putsch are put on trial for high treason in the main lecture theater of the Central War School on February the 26th, 1924. Report of the Württemberg Emissary, March the 13th, 1924. I attended one of the hearings myself. I was upset to see how the observers, who you could clearly see were mostly from circles close to Hitler, used every opportunity to show their support for the accused. Karl Moser von Fizek. Evidence from witnesses and discussions last 25 days. On March the 27th, 1924, the accused give their final statements. Letter to Clara and Fritz Hess. Hitler's final statement enclosed. It is one of the best, most powerful speeches that he has ever given. Even those in the courtroom who weren't particularly friendly to Hitler were deeply moved. Rudolf Hess. The verdict is handed down on April the 1st, 1924. All of the accused, with the exception of Ludendorff, are found guilty. Later, in dinner conversation, Hitler repeatedly made fun of the Bavarian government for putting him into Landsberg prison and then setting him free instead of executing him. He left no doubt that he would have done the opposite and taken drastic measures. Fritz Wiedemann, war comrade of Hitler. Adolf Hitler is sentenced to a minimum of five years in prison and ordered to pay a fine of 200 gold marks. In his 13 months in Landsberg prison, Adolf Hitler begins the transcript of his manifesto, Mein Kampf, that portrays his alleged journey through life and development as a politician and sets out his world view. Hans Frank, lawyer, participant in the Putsch. He once told me over dinner that in prison he read whatever he could get hold of. Nietzsche, Chamberlain, Ranke, Treitschke, Marx and others. Landsberg was my college at the state's expense. I recognized the long-term validity of my ideas from the history of the world and of nature. Adolf Hitler. His small room was full of books, newspapers, and magazines. There was a manuscript on his desk that he seemed to be working on at the time. Wilhelm Leforce, member of Shock Troops Hitler Division. Letter to Ilse Pröll, Munich, June the 29th, 1924. When I brought him tea this afternoon, he insisted that I stay to listen to his text revisions. Rudolf Hess, Landsberg Prison. Adolf Hitler writes Mein Kampf during his confinement in Landsberg Prison in the year 1924 and continues in the months after his release. So I decided not only to clarify the goals of our movement, but also to draw a picture of its development. With that, I also had the chance to give a representation of my own development. Adolf Hitler, forward to Mein Kampf. Letter to Ilse Pro, August the 4th, 1925. The Tribune believes he can finish his book by next week. I don't think so. Rudolf Hess. The biographical parts of his book are to a great extent exaggerated and unverified. However, his political goals are deadly serious. His view of the world is voluntaristic. He sees it as he wants to see it. Hitler's political gospel is derived from a primitive Darwinian idea of a struggle for existence. 
It reflects the permanent fight for survival of all against all, transferred from nature to human society. This struggle is a selection process in which so-called high-quality races have a better chance of survival. At its head is supposedly a white person of the Nordic race of Aryans that Hitler glorifies as the founders of culture. Like most anti-Semites before him, Hitler believes in a Jewish race, disguised as a religious community. He sees Jews in history as being parasites in the bodies of other nations and as contaminators of the blood of the Aryan race. For hours, the black-haired Jew boy waits to ambush the unsuspecting girl whom he pollutes with his blood and thus steals her from her people. With the same hidden agenda, destroying the hated white race with the inevitable resulting bastardization. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Hitler develops the caricature of an alleged Jewish conspiracy that has as its goal the extermination of all Aryans. This paranoid hidden conspiracy theory alleges that international Jewry devised Bolshevism and global capitalism in order to destroy the Aryan race. In another chapter, Hitler drafts plans for territorial living space for his Aryan German nation. The concern about a people without space is out of date in the already broadly industrialized society of the German Reich. In nationalist circles, however, it is still popular. We are stopping the endless German movement southwards and turning our gaze towards the land in the east. If today we speak of new land in Europe, we can primarily only have in mind Russia and her vassal border states. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. The first edition of Mein Kampf is published by the NSDAP's EAR publishing company and runs to 392 pages. Diary, October the 14th, 1925. I am finishing Hitler's book with great excitement. Who is this man? Half plebeian and half God. Is this really Christ or just John the Baptist? Josef Goebbels. The few authors who really took the time to read Hitler's book mocked the pompous style of his writing, his so-called prose, rather than dealing with his political program. Stefan Zweig. In the year 1945, the US military psychologist Gustav Mark Gilbert interrogates Rudolf Höss, the commander of the Auschwitz concentration camp, in his prison cell. To find out where the anti-Semitism came from, I asked him how he had arrived at his anti-Semitic views. He said for years he had read Goebbels' weekly editorials, as well as Rosenberg's The Myth of the 20th Century and, of course, Hitler's Mein Kampf. Gustav M. Gilbert, Nuremberg Diary. On November the 23rd, 1923, a ban had been issued against the NSDAP. All of the party's holdings were confiscated, the administration in Munich shut down, and the party's newspaper, the Völkischer Beobachter, banned. During his imprisonment, Hitler allows the party to disband so that no rival can fill his post. Ludwigslust in Mecklenburg. This German federal state is an early stronghold of nationalist power. Hitler is not directly involved in party politics while in prison. Members of the movement link up with other nationalist forces, presenting them together as one single list of candidates in national elections on May 2, 1924. The list performs exceptionally well in Mecklenburg-Schwerin, where it gains 21% of the vote. The positive results convince Hitler to take power in future by legal means. Report of the Württemberg Emissary, December the 20th, 1924. The State Supreme Court has now overruled the appeal by the prosecution against the decision of the District Court 
thereby granting probation for the remainder of the sentence. Karl Moser von Filzek. Hitler's remaining sentence of three years, 333 days, 21 hours and 50 minutes is waived according to the pedantically exact court records. I don't know any other city as hospitable as Munich. Everything would have been there to enjoy if there had not been one person too many. The man from the Burger Breu beer house had been released from prison. Friedrich Hollander, German composer. Diary, January the 14th, 1925. At the end of the month, Hitler wants to call for the re-establishment of the National Socialist German Workers' Party. The only thing to do. Josef Goebbels. On February the 27th, 1925, Hitler re-establishes the party. The Social Democrat Friedrich Ebert has been the elected president of the German Reich since January 1919, following a line of kings and kaisers that goes back hundreds of years. In the Weimar Republic, the office of the president is powerful. The Reich's army appears loyal to the Republic and its president. But large segments of the population are not happy with an elected president at the head of the government. Four months of rehearsals in Berlin. Cut off from the outside, you experience world events only marginally, like when an orchestra musician is given sandwiches by his wife wrapped in the midday paper. Oh, Friedrich Ebert is dead. Hindenburg has been elected president? Friedrich Hollander, German composer. We have a nanny. She comes from a small town in the north where residents tend to be really nationalistic. She's just been there on holiday. When asked what people there have to say about Ebert's death, she answered sadly, never have so many champagne corks been popped in our town as on the news of that death. Alfred Kerr, theatre critic. In the first round of elections for German president, on March the 29th, 1925, Erich Ludendorff is the candidate of the newly formed NSDAP and other nationalistic groups. He only receives 1.1% of the votes. When Paul von Hindenburg enters the race in the second round of voting, Adolf Hitler orders his party to support the aging 77-year-old army general. Hitler is now unquestionably the sole leader of the national camp. Diary, April the 26th, 1925. Willi's 52nd birthday. At 10 o'clock, the election began. 86 Hindenburg, 28 for Marx, 11 for Tellmann was the final result. In the school building, right and left were united by alcohol and sang patriotic songs. Henrietta Schneider. Diary, April the 27th, 1925. At 2 a.m., the latest results. Hindenburg with a 900,000 vote lead over Marx. Endless cheering among the masses. Long live Hindenburg. It is one step towards the final goal. No more and no less. Long live Hindenburg. Josef Goebbels. The election of Hindenburg as German president divides the Weimar period into two chapters. This closes the first, which you could probably, at a stretch, call revolutionary. And at the same time, it opens the second, which could best be described as a moderate restoration. Julius Leber, SPD member of the Reichstag. Diary, April the 26th, 1925. Hindenburg elected. Is he the man that Germany needs at this time? Is he not too old? Too easy to influence? Bella Fromm, German Jewish journalist.
During my visit, I met Hindenburg for the first time. I was shocked by the completely apolitical attitude and mental clumsiness of the man in whose hands the German people had put the power that confers the constitution on the Reich president. A man with a soldierly sense of duty, filled with an honest will to keep the oath on the Republican constitution. That was my first impression. It also became clear to me that everything would depend on good political advisers, the first of whom had to be the Reich Chancellor, who determines policy. That he was not always granted such advisers, so that he finally succumbed to the whisperings of short-sighted plotters, was disastrous both for himself and the German nation. Otto Braun, Social Democrat, Prussian Prime Minister.